Hey, we're doing the best PC game. Half of Alex, hit the gavel. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. Cool. There is such a like huge, such a diverse mix of PC games this year that it were really great. Is, yeah. Wait, that wasn't I'm, actually it. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna throw out a vote for um, Diabolical. Diabotical. Oh, Diab Diabol. We were just talking about this yesterday. How it's easier to like, yeah, say Diablo or Diabolical. Uh, yeah, it's Diabotical. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Going back to my old school PC, um, PC gaming roots. This is just the sort of game I looked for back in the day, and really wasn't interested much at all. I, I mentioned in another segment that um, my favorite retro and retro style FPS games are ones that focus on single player content, like great level design. But just playing Diabotical, everything they've done here, it just feels like a great PC game. You know, great art style, um, great movement, great frame rate. It's just a, a hell of a lot of fun. There are a lot of different ways to to play it as well. Like Ozzy was playing with a gamepad and it worked well. Um, it's clearly, it, it clearly caters to the it, keyboard and mouse crowd. I don't think it worked with the gamepad. It did not work with gamepad. Oh, I thought, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were playing it with the gamepad. He tried. No, 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 you playing with gamepad. Yeah. You try, okay, I got it. Uh, no, yeah. No, actually, I remember, no. B Bill said he wanted to play it on gamepad, and he got shouted down, so I just kept my mouth shut. Bill, uh, heard you bring it up earlier, Ozzy, and was making You both brought it up, it, and I was and like, shame got, on you. Everyone okay. thought I was being serious, and I was trying to joke about your, your <laughs> statement. Got okay, it. I, I was being 60% serious. Got yeah, it. No. I, I actually don't think that's like a huge factor. It was just something I thought was kind of neat, but apparently it doesn't exist. Um, no. Yeah, like it it just feels optimized for keyboard and mouse anyway. Like the first thing I do in yeah. a PC game is I go into the options. I look at what bells and whistles I can turn on and off, um, how much I can customize the controls. And yeah, I, I just, I really, really like Diabotical. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. I think it's kind of shot up people's uh, game of the year list. Yeah only we reviewed it uh so yeah what else we got here flight simulator that's a game on pc game that's only on pc oh, it now. sure is if you want. um yeah flight simulator i guess it is only on pc but uh it's way up on my pc game of the year list just based on the fact of what it allows me to do i know i've talked about it before but um, the amount of depth that there is with the um, what you can do with settings in terms of getting as immersive as someone like Jan did on the stream where he was kind of showing it off uh, versus being able to kind of tone it down so it's more accessible and like hey you know what like I don't want to manage this I don't want to micromanage that so I'm going to dial it back a little bit there's a lot of options in there that will make it something that you can play kind of casually or you can take the full flight simulator experience and go crazy with it um the thing that really resonated with me the most about it though was what it allowed me to do it wasn't really the controls it wasn't really how technically amazing it was it was being able to go and fly past my apartment on my first ever flight at night and be like that was where i used to live um it was being able to fly to where i used to live across the province and fly over a lake where my family had an island and like be like that is that island or being able to fly across the ocean or not even across the ocean but take off from across the ocean and see where canadians landed on d-day in world war ii um and stuff that like i can't actually do that stuff especially in 2020 but i haven't had the opportunity to do some of this stuff in real life but that offered me the closest um uh, thing that i could ask for in terms of going to some places that i can't go and seeing some things that i can't see um so for me it's uh, I think of games not just in like do I have fun with them but are they important to me and are they important to the genre Half-Life Alex is extremely important to uh, VR but I think Microsoft Flight Simulator is also it's important in that it gives people access to things like that they just don't have you know something as simple as being able to go your own neighborhood even in this year where we've all been unable to travel as much or at all being able to fly was something kind of special this year I flew past my, uh, I have a buddy, one of my best friends since high school. Um, I took a video of me flying over his house where he lives because his kids just think it's amazing, you know, to see their house in the mm -hmm. video games just like blew their minds. Um, so it's just little things like that. And there's just 
so many opportunities. I mean, you know what? Like, we're talking PC game of the year. Like, Shaq News has its own livery in there on multiple airplanes. Mm -hmm. Like, you can slap that skin on your airplane and you can fly a Shaq News airplane across the world. That's pretty cool. It is awesome. It's like Rocket League for airplanes. <laughs> Except yeah. I haven't retired yet. What else we got here? Okay. okay. Vote. Uh, brother. Voting time. Half, Half Life Alex came out this year. We've talked about it a lot. It's a PC game. You can only really play it on PC. You need a PC game, PC to play it. Obviously, it's a VR game as well. Um, but in my opinion, it's the best game to be released on PC this year. So that's why I nominated it for this category. But I'm tired of talking about how great Half Life is. <laughs> Vote. Oh, yeah, we've kind of, we've oh, kind of beaten oh. that drum, and it's go back and check out some of our earlier videos. Uh, Half Life Alex is pretty great. Mm -hmm. Watch us to play it too. Like we have that archive somewhere. Yeah, um, I'm gonna try to turn all those into YouTube, uh, the streams from this week. Uh, so we'll have even more content, Greg. Because we edit. don't. It's like they don't have to edit it. That's you don't have to edit it. I'll edit it, Greg. If that's all to, good. As you much as you want. You don't have to I do mean, nothing. I mean, one of the I'll have to tag it. Yeah, you'll have to tag it. I can tag it. Hit a thumb. I'll have to thumb it. No, I, okay, fine. <laughs> I think you can things... you can make thumbnails, but that's it. <laughs> I think one of the things that also if you've beat the drum on for for Half Life Alex is just like what it does as far as the VR platform. But I think it's kind of as far as like what a game does and how it advances technology. I think that uh, it actually stands on equal ground with Microsoft Flight Simulator as far as just like the idea of taking cloud computing data and immersing it into the world to create like the level which is Earth as you go. That's kind of astounding. As as like an as like what it can mean for games going forward and what it means for this game right now as it is. I think, like, there aren't many things I'm willing to, like, actually debate you on, like, the merits of technology, or something that's moved gaming technology forward, but I actually think this is one of the few times where I think that Microsoft Flight Simulator stands on the foreground of this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it made Bing worth something. I mean, I feel like Microsoft Simulator kind of a glimpse at the potential of uh, the future of gaming in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't think most stuff is going to get there anytime soon, but maybe like in the next few years. Well, if Microsoft keeps buying studios that will. Yeah. So, uh, and it's just freaking, I don't know. It's so impressive. Uh, I think you're looking at two technological feats here in two sort of uh different genres is the is the real conundrum right uh do you do you sort of cordon off half-life alex as a virtual reality experience or and say that that kind of confines it as far as the uh the argument goes with Microsoft Flight Simulator as something that's more uh, universally approachable in, in that in, in 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 some ways because you don't need the VR equipment as a as a gatekeeper. I don't think using accessibility as a argument here is going to work because Flight Simulator requires a pretty beefy PC, and there's also God um, knows how many peripherals that you can buy for that thing. No, where it's also become a it can become a multi thousand dollar hobby very quickly. Yeah, that's there's a good also point. the gate of uh, data used to used to address the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think TJ's point about Azure Cloud and Bing and everything they've done to create the world is a very solid point. Um, and I don't disagree with any of it. Uh, I think that it does half-life a disservice to call it a vr game i think it's the best pc game it shipped on pc it's valve valve makes pc games and i think that 
the lessons we're going to learn from Half-Life, Alex, and this, this new Source engine are going to benefit all PC games down the road, not just VR. And I think that's also true of Flight Sim. I, I don't sure. think that I'm not trying to pick a side here. I think both of these games are excellent. Like, And that's this, this right here speaks to how difficult making a top 10 game of the year list has been this year because mm -hmm. it's all over the place the amount of different things that we've had to experience and pc is definitely that case uh, right i see because... one other game on this list does anyone want to speak to it wasteland 3 right now uh i didn't add it to the list i'm kind of over making cases uh if someone whoever added it wants to make a case for it go ahead i've said plenty enough uh, about that's, that's true. We can that just, I want to talk about, so go for it. I had originally thrown it on this list, but we can go back to the previous videos and make an argument for it. So yeah, that's fair. Labor I will points. say it doesn't require a VR headset to play. It doesn't require a super beefy computer. So, mm -hmm. you know, two positives for it that the others don't have going for them. Yeah, for sure. And it, I, I don't know, it's it's fun. <laughs> it very looks like a, it's, it's a fun game. Good it's a very good expansive choice simulator that allows you to play it the way you want to play it. Mm -hmm. like, as far as any game goes, it's great. Nice. Okay, well, it looks like we only have four nominations. Right? Yep. Okay, well, let's Boom. vote. Half-Life Alex. I'll yep. start the train. Craig. I'll yeah. the train. I'm jumping on that Half-Life Alex train. Get me, sign me up. Sign me up for that. Half-Life Alex. Woot, woot. All aboard the hype train. <laughs> Wait, who was that? It was Ozzy. It was me. Thank Ozzy you. and then the other Ozzy. Nice. <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Uh, I, I want to I wanna make sure Flight Simulator gets some props, so I'm going to vote for that. One thing Krabs mentioned, like you can play this game at 60 FPS on a mid-range PC, which I think is definitely a point in its favor. Like, uh, I agree with you, Asif. I don't think, I, I feel like pigeonholing Alex as a VR game does it a disservice, but also like for me, this category means like something you can play with a, a computer, a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. And mm -hmm. uh, Flight Simulator is just... Um, really really impressive and you know as i wrote about in in the, the xbox and microsoft long read on shack news um F flight simulator has never really been taken seriously as a game but it, yeah. but it is and it, it's making waves in, in gaming tech but also in just technology as a whole that's why i'm, I'm happy to have this discussion about it i, I feel like it's been looked over by a lot of different uh, in the same, in the same way that sports are like, oh, Madden's not a game. Like, it, it is for better or worse, and so is Flight Simulator. It's, mm -hmm. it's more than a game, but it is a game. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm Flight Simulator. Okay. Flight Sim. Uh, I'm also voting for Flight Sim. Steve's not here. Donovan. Uh, I'll go Half-Life. <clears throat> Josh. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I kind of disagree with uh, Half-Life Alex not being considered a uh, more VR game than anything because it can't really be experienced the way it's meant to be experienced any other way. So I got to go with Wasteland 3. Okay, well, no one else voted for Wasteland, so... Uh, Chris? I'll vote for Wasteland 3. Oh, there you go. Wasteland 3. So right now we have one, two, three, four votes for Microsoft Flight Simulator. One, two, three, four votes for Half-Life Alex, and two votes for Wasteland 3. So You are I the tiebreaker? Older. I am the tiebreaker. It's like picking my two favorite children, except I hate kids. Mm. <laughs> Which one will take better care of you in your dotted shop? <laughs> you know, which will put you in the better nursing home one day. <clears throat> Alve definitely won't do that. <laughs> uh, you know, um, it's tough. I mean, I didn't can... we have people revote before? Did well, we do that? Not if there's a tie, there's not there isn't a tie. There's, I am not, the a, there's not a tie. Oh, you're the tiebreaker. Oh, I see. Yeah, Sorry. like if I, if I vote for Wasteland, then it's a revote. 
<laughs> so that's this is a weird meta I could wow I could employ here. Um, but I'm not going to. Best PC game. Like to me, it's a game that released on PC. I know that might be a little too literal for some people, but I'm gonna vote for Half-Life Alex. So there you have it, folks. Get excited. Even though it requires a VR headset, it's a game that was really released. You can only play it on PC, right? Half-Life Alex, best PC game of 2020 here at Chat Games.